In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about doing SSH forwarding. SSH forwarding actually has a lot of different uses. And one of the things that you can do with it is you can use SSH to tunnel connections out to different locations. I want to set up a connection to another system here. And I'm going to do this to a system on my network here. Now I'm going to set up a local forward. So I'm going to say do this on port 8888. And what I'm going to say at that point is if I connect to port 8888 on my local system, we're going to forward that out through this SSH tunnel and eventually it's going to go to google.com on port 80. And the minus N says don't run anything and the minus F says just drop into the background and don't do anything here. So now I've got my port forward running, so now I can telnet localhost 8888. And you can see here, I've actually gotten a response from Google. It may not be immediately obvious to you, but what I can see as I'm doing this is there's a lot of Google references in here, and I could just skim all the way up to the top and eventually we'll come to the headers and there should be something that makes it clear up in the headers that we've connected to Google. In the meantime though, this is just the HTML that we got back as well as the JavaScript. So you can see this is google.com and P3P policy. It does say google.com here and you can see in the cookie it also says google.com. So we did connect to google.com and you can see we just connected on the localhost, and localhost refers to the local system. It resolves to the IP address 127.0.0.1, which is the loopback address, and it always refers to the local machine. Now, I could also do a remote port forward, and this could be useful for a lot of different reasons. We were talking about the Raspberry Pi. Now, what you could do with the Raspberry Pi is, if you had an SSH server set up, what you could do would be to do something like this. So what I want to be able to do is on the remote side, I'm going to listen to port 2222, and that is going to connect to basically the SSH server sitting on my local system here. So I'm going to connect to that system, and it's going to set up a remote port forward. If I were to connect to port 2222 here on that remote system, it's really connecting me back to the system I was just on. So this is kind of an odd way of doing it, but in this case, I've got two systems and it can be hard to get your head around what's actually happening here. So let me go back and just show you again. So I logged in via SSH to this system here, the 172.30.42.55, and I set up a remote port forward. So 2222 on that remote host is going to come back to localhost here. So that's at Oliver. So when I get a connection on port 2222 on the remote system, which is Bill, it's going to forward that off to Oliver here on port 22. So again, if I were to connect to localhost on port 2222, it's going to ask me for my password. And now I'm logged back into Oliver because even though I've connected on the local host, what it's really doing is it's sending that back through the SSH tunnel to the origination of the tunnel, which is Oliver. Now I can log back out and I'm back on the remote system. I log back out. Tunnel is now closed. I can't get from that remote system back to this local system anymore. But using the Raspberry Pi, you could do this tunneling approach even if there's a firewall in place because often outbound connections are just accepted. You could have your Raspberry Pi fire off this SSH tunnel out to an SSH server that you've got sitting somewhere 
you get in on the remote SSH server, connect to a local port, and it will drop you into the Raspberry Pi, regardless of whether there's a firewall in place or not, as long as the firewall is allowing outbound connections. So you can get into a system on the local network that will give you access to do any number of different types of things, scanning and doing some exploits, maybe running Metasploit and whatever you want to do. So this can give you access to systems and networks behind a firewall by initiating the remote connection outbound from inside the network. 